All right, we are streaming live just so everyone's aware. Rick, do we need to wait for the mayor? He should, I just talked to him, he should be coming on any second. All right. And hey, Mike, I'm uh, in the car, so I got my video off, but I'll switch to video once I get back to my computer. Very appropriate for traffic and transportation committee meeting to be driving. <laughs> Just do on it the highway. There you go. Well, you can give us a traffic report every 10 minutes. <laughs> and you can tell Troy and um, Keith how the lights are doing in terms of being coordinated in sync. Yeah. There you go. Traffic and Transportation Committee meeting in real time. All right, Rick, I'm going to give the mayor um, a couple more minutes just because we got a full agenda this afternoon. That's okay. I will go and see when he's going to get on. But okay. I thought, Mike. All right, y'all, let's go. I'd like to call to order the April 13th, 2021 meeting of the City of Charleston Traffic and Transportation Committee. Thank you all for joining in and ask uh, Council Member Jackson if she would lead us in a moment of silence or an invocation, please. Thank you. We can bow our heads, please. Lord, we come before you this afternoon um, as a committee of um, dedicated servants to further the mission of our city to help people be safe on the roads and mobile and experience the lifestyle that we in our, in our wisdom and opportunities would prefer to give them. Thank you for your presence with us. In your name we pray. Come on. Amen. Thank you very much. First on the agenda is approval of minutes from March 8th, 2021. Second. Is there a second. We have a motion and a second. Any additions, deletions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. I see the mayor is now joined in. Next, um, Mr. Kronzberg and team, um, build grant update. Keith, are we going to hand this to you to begin or is Jason, how are we going to do this? I believe uh, we have, have, have Jason and Edmund on, so uh, I'll pass it on to them to do the update. All right, Mr. Kronzberg, I see you. So I've got multiple screens here, so I'm going to try to give you eye contact as as I go through this. Um, right. So Mr. Chairman, the committee, thank you for having us here today. I'm going to be providing you all an update on the uh, Ashley River Crossing bill grant. Um, I'm just going to go through a long list of items that are either completed or ongoing um, as we uh, move into or move through this current contract, which gets us to 30% uh, construction documents and um, all of the needed SCDOT, FHWA, and uh, NICA, NEPA documentation requirements. So with that said, and please interrupt me whenever you want, and we'll try to answer your questions. Um, it's been a couple months since we last gave you an update. So in, in the time since we last met, um, almost all of the field survey work has been completed. Uh, you may have seen the marsh buggies out there. Um, that was the geotechnical work that was being accomplished. Um, the, so that all of those files were received just recently in March. Um, traffic studies for all of the various areas that are part of this contract, which include uh, the Lockwood intersection, the Folly Wesley Road intersection, and the Wapu Road intersection have been completed. Um, those draft studies have been uh, submitted to SCDOT and we are awaiting the feedback from them on any additional recommendations they may have um, as it relates to the traffic studies. The NEPA or uh, environmental work that's happening, um, all of the, the pertinent information has been sent to those agencies in February and March. Uh, we've received feedback from many of them. 
and uh, are providing additional information um, to uh, both SHPO and NOAA based on some of the, some of the comments we've gotten from them. Um, but everything's going along nicely with, with all of the, the agency coordination. Um, the big one with the Corps of Engineers, we're still working with them on, on, on the permitting requirements for um, placing the bridge and keeping all of the, the channels open and free and clear and how they all line up with the two existing bridges as well as the James Island connector. So there's the shipping channel requirements if, or navigable channel requirements, if you will. And um, so that's all happening. Um, <clears throat> the categorical exclusion uh, has been submitted to FHWA, uh, waiting for feedback from them. The categorical exclusion means that based on the scale of this project, um, there will be less requirements for uh, the approvals through FHWA, um, and that has to do with amount of wetland, wetlands that are impacted. And um, so that's a good thing for the project. Again, that documentation has been uh, submitted to the FHWA and it's being reviewed by them. So um, there's a lot of work that happens to get these documents submitted. So um, just rest assured that that work is happening. It's not a lot of work that you see or anybody sees much of, but it is happening. Um, moving out of the NEPA and uh, permitting um, items, we've got conceptual designs created for the intersections and pathways. And these are really things that you've already seen in the build application. There just may be some minor modifications to actually make them real since they were um, really conceptual in that grant application. Let's see, moving through, we're expecting a conceptual cost estimate um, to come to us for review soon. Uh, we're hoping by the end of the month, at which point in time we can uh, sit down and um, review with um, all of us just to, to make sure we're, we're still in, the, in and, uh, and, and on budget. Um, and remember, that's a 15% cost estimate um, as at the end of this current contract, we'll have 30% drawings. Um, when we move into the proposal portion of this project, all of that stuff will continue to evolve and continue to tighten up. But um, just to be clear, that's a cost estimate based on a 15% design, not a 15% of the total cost estimate. That's correct, 15% of design. Yes. I want to make sure everyone who's listening is on the same page here. Yeah, Good. Thank that's you. right. <clears throat> so um, as part of that cost estimate, the, the, the design team is looking at uh, the structural design of, of the span, the movable span. Um, we've met with the SCDOT bridge staff to talk about operations and maintenance of the movable span and how all of that dovetails into the existing infrastructure um, associated with the two existing bridges. So all of that stuff is still being coordinated and still being discussed um, at a staff level with DOT. Um, lots of hydrology and hydraulic design happening. That's the um, modeling of the Ashley River, how the water goes through these structures, how it affects the, the, uh, the structural integrity and it really interprets uh, how it's, the, these things are designed. So when that water is moving uh, and it, you know, the things that you can't see are probably most important in this project, making sure that we have a good stable design um, and how they affect the adjacent bridges. Uh, so the, the geotechnical work was completed. All of that data is back in the lab now. The geotechnical engineers are preparing the reports that will then interpret the design as well. Um, utility coordination is underway, uh, planned for um, this month and next month. Subsurface engineering files, those, those are, it's all completed, should be submitted uh, this month or next month. And then we come to the development of the request for qualifications and the request for proposals. So right now, 
The RFQ has been submitted to the FHWA. Many of you have received invites for uh, participation in that review process. We did have to change that up a little bit based on some of the feedback we received from the state. Um, you're all welcome to, to be advisors in the process, but um, that current selection committee is a, that will review the qualification submittals is, um, is a large group of uh, staff members from the city, the FHWA, um, HDR, SCDOT. Uh, we have uh, representatives from the medical university, uh, medical district, uh, Dennis Frazier, Corey Robinson. We have the Charleston Parks Conservancy representatives who they were part of the build grant as uh, application as well. And um, we also have members of uh, staff members from Charleston County Public Works that will serve uh, on that selection committee as they are part of this fu the funding for this project. So where we are right now, we've gone live with our website and um, which is just kind of gives everybody an overview. There's a great introduction from the mayor, a video, and um, our next step in that process is to publish an online public meeting where all of that um, feedback will come from. Again, anybody can look at it. Anybody can provide that feedback at any time of day. Um, you know, this is all just the challenges of COVID, right? Hopefully we're, we're getting through COVID, but nonetheless, we still have to, to be safe and that online uh, meeting will provide the opportunity for anybody and everybody to, to provide um, input and feedback. So um, hopefully that the online meeting will go live in the next week or so. Uh, we'll have a social media blast and hopefully um, everybody will participate and provide feedback. So um, we're on schedule right now. We have received a little bit of feedback from the FHWA that some of their review processes might take a little bit longer than we had anticipated. So we're evaluating our schedule. Um, you know, it was originally indicated that reviews would take approximately 10 days. Um, again, with COVID, the change of the administration, some of that um, review process may take a little bit longer and um, we'll continue to work with the FHWA on making sure that uh, we're all in, um, aligned with our uh, schedules, if you will. So that's kind of a lot of talk about a lot of behind the scenes work that's happening. Um, you know, we have a, a very finite space that we're building something and we hope to bring to you soon some conceptual ideas for what the, the movable span will look like. Uh, I think that's probably what everybody's eager to see. So we'll work on those and get that to you as soon as we can. Okay, thank you. Um, I see Mr. Most is on here. Anything new add from your perspective, Evan? Seems to no, be I'm actually double meeting it right now, but I didn't have anything to add other than um, this is not really TNT related. The, the permit that we have for the Ashley River Walk that that's the core permit we'll have to renew that again here too we've been watching that but the bridge was taking the lead on this so that was really the only minor thing okay great thank you all right so while we've got them here any questions from the committee first off for mr consberg mr most or mr benjamin on the project looking around i also see we have council member oh council member jackson yes ma'am just curious. I, I know you um, sort of corrected yourself or said a different word, Jason, when you were talking about for um, working with the. I, I think at first you, you talked about sh you said shipping and then you said navigable lanes, and that's because we don't really see shipping any longer on the Ashley River side of the peninsula. Right. Isn't that right? So that's what right. what would what would you guess, or does anybody um, have they figured it out? What what will be like the biggest you know bulk of a ship will be going through there is it just the big you know recreational ships or what what is it boats yeah i'm not sure all the the details but it's really recreational boating um you know i know that when the bristol marina was constructed their permit was based on the fact that 
they didn't have sailboats that were going through those bridges every day. Um, so really, the, you know, the, the the days of that being a shipping shipping channel are kind of old, and really, it's just recreational motors, unless there's there was some scenario where the the Army Corps needed to do some channel work up. But I don't, you know, I don't see any commercial activities happening there. I, I think Clark and Marine. Sorry, go ahead. I just wanted to then follow up. Does that mean that we get any break then in how, you know, high off um, or how how wide or, you know, what what is the actual clearance that needs to be met in making the bridge open, however we're gonna, you know, see it engineered. And I'm just curious. So if you don't know, that's fine. <laughs> the width the width will be somewhat commensurate with the, the width of the openings of the current the two current bridges. Um, there, I know there's some been some discussion lately on how those things flare the the protection barriers flare out a little bit, um, but it'll be very similar to what you see there now. Jason, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, do you know Andrew? I think his last name is Franos, PCL Construction. Uh, so what was the what was the name again? Sorry. Uh, Andrew Fran Knox. They keep logging in as PCL Construction. I'm not aware, Edmund. Okay. Or, you know. I just wanted to double no, check. That's, no, that's not familiar to me. Okay, thank you. All right, back to our regularly scheduled programming. Any um, more questions from the committee for for Mr. Consberg and team? All right, I see we also have council members, Sheely, and I believe I saw Pell, there he is. Um, do you all have any questions on this particular project for Mr. Consberg? I don't see anything from council member Sheely. Council member Pell. Uh, thanks for the recognition, um, Ch Chairman Seekings, and I, I just want to thank our staff and this committee for continuing to shepherd through this very important project. It's um, hard to overstate just how big of a deal this is for, for my district and the entire city. And it sounds like everything's going great. We've got a great team, We've got a great plan. I'm not going to micromanage and meddle in y'all's work, but if there's any ever anything I can do to help, please just let me know. Thank y'all. Thank you. And then council member Brady, I don't know if he's got any questions or a traffic report. Nope. It was a uh, moped had crashed on the sidewalk. So the police were blocking one of the lanes. <laughs> All right. Real time traffic and transportation report. Thank you. Mayor, anything for uh, Mr. Consberg and his team? Well, I just want to thank Jason and Edmund and Terry and, and the staff. They really have been doing a terrific job of marshalling this thing along. Uh, it's very complicated. And, um, and um, I think on the vessels coming through Councilmember Jackson, um, you still have Parker Marine up there at Magnolia doing commercial work coming back and forth through a look every now and again, you get a sailboat, but um, I guess I'm old enough to remember when Braswell shipyard used to be up at Magnolia and they used to bring in some pretty sizable vessels up, up and down through there to get to the little shipyard they had up there. And um, it's, it's amazing to me um, living just on the other side of the bridge there, how, infrequently it, it opens up these days it, it's 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 almost becoming rare you know com, particularly compared to the wapu cut but anyway they're doing a great job all right thank you all right any other member of the committee council member del chapo anything from you okay all right mr Kronzberg, thank you um we will keep inviting you back please keep us keep us up to date certainly be interested in seeing that first 15 percent design estimate um and any sort of advanced peak we might get at what the movable part of the bridge looks like. That's, I think, on everybody's mind. So thank you very much for all your hard work. Yep, so as soon as we get right. a little bit further through that, the SCDOT and FHWA coordination, we'll bring you back some, some stuff to look at. Are you all gonna do it in the alternative just for pricing purposes? Or are you gonna try to decide early on on a set movable part of the bridge and go from there? Well, we're, we're kind of, uh, deferring to the consultant team to, to really evaluate the most efficient and, and cost efficient design from both at O&M and construction. So, um, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll bring something that's, that's beautiful, um, 
maybe not quite as big as big as the Ravenel Bridge, but <laughs> something that we can all be proud of and that uh, is cost efficient. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Unless there's anything from Mr. Kronzberg and team, we'll let them go back to work and move on to our next agenda item, which is the signal maintenance agreement and projects yeah. update from Mr. Mitchell. Let me, uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Chair, me introducing this. No, not at all, Mr. Benjamin. Um, so thank you all for giving us the opportunity to give you this update. We tried to get into the practice of doing this at least once a year, um, specifically because um, the signal maintenance agreement, which two seconds of background, um, you know, uh, we are tasked as a city in partnership with SCDOT to operate and maintain um, the vast majority of the signals in the city um, on behalf of SCDOT, but that also allows us to do um, various different projects and, and, and maintenance efforts as well. And so because that, that, that contract um, is on a March to March timeframe, we always thought it was important at the top of the year, first quarter, to give you a sense of projects that have been accomplished um, projects that are ongoing and, and potential projects we'd like to see um, looked at in the future. Also giving you a sense of projects that we as a city are involved in that uh, may not be necessarily uh, with regards to the signal maintenance agreement, but are in coordination with other varying different agencies. So if you could bear with Troy, he just wants to kind of run those down for you. Um, we'll, we'll also send you uh, that, 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 that list report. Um, in fact, I'll try to um, send that to your inboxes in the next couple of minutes so you're able to follow. Um, and uh, happy to take any questions or otherwise. We also have Parrish Brown um, on the call as well, who's our assistant um, signals manager um, and, and Troy and Parrish work together regularly uh, to keep our traffic moving. So I'll pass it on to Troy and, and uh, just check your inbox. Good afternoon, uh, following up on what she said, I'm just gonna go right into these, uh, these projects. Um, they are broken, broken down into uh, categories. Uh, projects by DOT and their funding, uh, projects by the city and SMA funding, and um, city projects with city funding. Uh, the first project will be the Formosa uh, Folly Road uh, signal rebuild. Uh, this project is a joint effort between uh, the city and DOT to upgrade the intersection equipment, uh, which will be with mast arms, uh, with decorative uh, mast arms. Um, as a part of this uh, project, the city provided the signal design and DOT will be providing all construction costs, except for, for the mast arms, which the city will be responsible for. Um, the project is uh, stated to be uh, let uh, in June of this year and hopefully begin by September. Uh, the next project is a uh, DOT intersection improvement project. I know most of you have all seen these going through West Ashley, which uh, the corridors uh, being covered is Paul Cantrell, Glen McConnell uh, Parkway, uh, Ashley River Road, St. Andrews uh, Boulevard, where uh, they have been upgrading all the actual intersections with uh, flashing yellow arrows and pedestrian improvements to include uh, the signals itself and uh, additional uh, roadway pavement markings and crossings. Um, so they're currently working on US 17 at this time and uh, the completion date is supposed to be in June, but however, due to COVID it's been extended an additional 60 days. Um, part of that project is uh, to do traffic responsive signal timing I've broken that down into a separate court category since uh, um, it will be regarding uh, the upgrading of the signal timings along the Glen McConnell and Ashley River corridors from Bees Ferry to Wesley and along Ashley River Road to uh, Wesley Drive. Uh, with this, the reason why we were chosen for this project is because we have the advanced traffic controllers already installed which is a project uh, that we were involved in since 2009, along with the communication infrastructure. So DOT is paying for all the costs of all these upgrades as a part of the SMA that we have with them. Uh, the next project will be uh, the replacement of damaged vehicle sensors. This is just part of our annual maintenance that we have with SEDOT. If these vehicle sensors are not being replaced, it would 
cause the intersections not to um, operate as effic efficiently as possible. So this, this is something on an annual basis once we do our, our inspections that we make sure that these are operational. Uh, the next project is the pedestrian improvement project in conjunction with uh, SEDOT project 700 crosswalks. Uh, this was a joint project between the city and uh, DOT uh, that would consist of design and installation of pedestrian signals at nine locations on the peninsula. Um, and that uh, that do not provide a safe passage for uh, pedestrians to navigate existing crosswalks. In 2000, uh, we can, April 2000, uh, this project was completed and the nine locations uh, that were upgraded with pedestrian improvements was King at Hugey, Rutledge Avenue at Hugey Street, King Street at Sumter Street, King Street at Romney Street, Calhoun and Rutledge Avenue, Rutledge Avenue at B Bufane Street, Rutledge Avenue at Broad Street, Broad Street at Ashley Avenue, Meeting Street at George Street, and Meeting Street at Wolf Street. Um, and as, a, as again, the city's in kind was just the signal design, DOT provided the contractor and the equipment and all costs associated with installation. Uh, the next project is the SEDOT safety uh, road audit project. Uh, this project uh, was brought uh, to the city by the DOT where they uh, actually looked at the corridors of King Street, Meeting Street, Calhoun Street, and Sir Phillips Street. Uh, the, the purpose of the RA, RSAs uh, like these is to identify practical cost efficient safety improvements that can be implemented along the corridor selected. Uh, recommendations are based on crash uh, data analysis, engineering judgment, and stakeholder input. Uh, the RSAs typically include stakeholders such as uh, local government, ourselves, uh, engineering, and local law enforcement. Um, the RSAs was conducted by Stantec. Um, and the project completion date is not ha has not been determined at this time, um, but we have uh, been in constant contact with uh, DOT and and provided updates. Uh, the next project is pedestrian improvements project at Folly Road at Hollyby Road in conjunction with the DOT's Project Seven Hundred Crossroad. Uh, this project. It's a DOT project that would upgrade the intersection with pedestrian improvements. Uh, the project uh, would consist of design and installation of pedestrian signals and crosswalk at the intersection to provide safe passage for pedestrians to navigate across Folly Road. That intersection is partially uh, protected for pedestrians going across Harborview, but there was no way for pedestrians to go across uh, Folly Road. And uh, this project, uh, Completion date has not been determined at this time, but the, it's going to be uh, constructed and uh, fully funded by DOT. The next uh, project is the inspection uh, intersection improvements to upgrade left turn operations at the location of US 17 at Farm Field and Lockwood Drive at Calhoun Street. Uh, the department has over over time received multiple requests to upgrade these uh, protected only left turn movements to protected and permissive. Uh, the project will consist of safety review studies to upgrade the uh, existing protected only left turn operations to flashing yellow arrow uh, operations. Uh, Kimley Horn and Associates, uh, the engineering firm that was contracted has already begun the studies. Uh, and the, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, they are currently uh, still in the, the design and um, study phase. Uh, the last update I received is that uh, both of these uh, location reports have been submitted to DOT uh, for review and uh, the reviews, uh, they, we are waiting for those reviewed to be returned uh, so we can move to the signal design phase uh, once approved by DOT. Uh, the next project is Mean Street at Brigade Street intersection improvements. 
which uh, most of you all should be familiar with. Um, this project uh, was a joint effort between the city and DOT to improve improvements at the intersection of Brigade Street and Meeting Street. Among the improvements installed are bollards for protected bike lanes, concrete bob outs, high visibility markings, uh, installation of rectangular rapid uh, flashing beacons for pedestrian safety, green paint for bicyclists to more clearly alert drivers to walker and walkers to increase pedestrian and bicyclist safety uh, at the intersection. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the project was completed in March of 2021. There are still some minor details that need to be uh, looked at at the intersection, uh, but uh, it was completed, well, partially completed in March 2020, as uh, stated before. The next project is the cybersecurity for traffic for the traffic signal system. Uh, this project is to uh, uh, consist of securing uh, traffic hub cabinets that houses the traffic signal fiber work uh, and signal system. Uh, the project includes installation of electronic locks, Bluetooth electronic keys, and client-based software to monitor and track access to all locations on the network. Um, due to the type of equipment that we have now, um, there could be exposure to cyber attacks uh, so this was installed to protect the uh, signal system and allows us to monitor and track anyone that enters these uh, traffic cabinets that we have. Uh, the next uh, project is the Meeting Street at Bard Street Infrastructure Replacement Project. Um, this project is, is to repair uh, uh, the conduit raceways and uh, signal cabling at this location. Um, and this is part of maintenance uh, in accordance with the SMA by SCDOT. Um, the, pro the projected uh, completion date is December of 2021. Uh, the next project is the communication infrastructure replacement um, and uh, traffic controller upgrade. Uh, this project has been going on since 2009, where we upgrade our entire communication infrastructure from uh, copper cable to the fiber network. Uh, we're now on the peninsula and continuing to work throughout the traffic signal system. Um, <clears throat> well, the area that we're working in now, or the contractors working in, is along Courtney Drive, B Street, Calhoun Street, Meeting Street, and East Bay Street. Uh, the improvements will prepare uh, uh, Calhoun Street corridor for the uh, low, country rapid uh, low country rapid transit system uh, with the advanced traffic controllers uh, that we have out there. Uh, the project began in April um, with, uh, with the contractor making great efforts. Um, however, due to being downtown, uh, there are issue, underground issues that uh, we're continuing to work through. Uh, but hopefully we will have this uh, project completed by the end of this month. Uh, the next project is the school zone automation project. Uh, the, the project was completed in September of 2020. Uh, and it, uh, what was done was the complete automation of all school zone flashers. Uh, the existing uh, system that we had was old and antiquated. The project, this project will allow all school zones <clears throat> uh, entry and exit times to be updated annually and monitored from our traffic management center via the computer cloud-based system. The system will also allow us to uh, make changes uh, to broadcast out to the systems uh, in case of any uh, unscheduled emergencies or doing storms. Um, the, the department will set up a meeting uh, with all schools for information ses uh, session of technology and, the op and how it operates. Uh, the next project is the connected vehicle project, which is a uh, pilot project that we're conducting with DOT to test the connected vehicle technology at five locations along the 
uh, September Clark. Uh, this project uh, will let us see how vehicles connect to our traffic signals and provide information as you travel down the corridor via your cell phone uh, through a, a, an app. Uh, there are some delays with the project uh, due to some technical issues, uh, and we're currently um, working on it and to have it completed by June of this year. Uh, the next project we have is the West Edge Flasher project, uh, which was completed in May of 2020. This project is part of the city's uncontrolled pedestrian crosswalk project, which began in, back in 2017. Um, Fishburn Street at West Edge is, is the last intersection out of 12 locations that we have completed on the peninsula. Uh, <clears throat> the SDOT SMA base funds was used to purchase the equipment with the city completing the installation of all equipment. The, uh, the next project is the artistic uh, traffic cabinet project. Um, on the peninsula, uh, we completed uh, uh, in September uh, two locations uh, via the Gibbs Art Gallery where we took uh, existing traffic cabinets and applied uh, artistic wraps. Um, two of those locations were Farley Road at South Windermere and Meeting Street at Hugey Street. And uh, we also completed uh, one of these uh, cabinets at Morrison at Brigade using a local artist who's employed by the city of Charleston, um, Mr. Kelvin Bluffton. Um, hopefully we can, will continue to try to advance with this uh, project with other local artists and the Gibbs Art uh, Gallery. Uh, the next project is the ITS Signal Systems Operation Division uh, Annual Maintenance, which we do in accordance with the SMA. Uh, this project is part of the annual maintenance of all intersections to include replacement of uh, traffic signals, pedestrian signals, um, uh, broken uh, traffic signal shades, uh, back plates, LED uh, pedestrian and traffic signals. Um, indications and wooden steel poles. Um, as a part of this project, uh, we have um, <clears throat> we, uh, we, we complete we visited over 288 locations where we've made uh, all of these repairs and this was done in-house by the uh, traffic signal staff. Uh, the next project is the City of Charleston traffic signal retiming project. Um, most of the system has been retimed uh, back in 2018, uh, but uh, the peninsula, over 90 uh, locations have not been completed. And uh, this, uh, the projection completion date uh, cannot do, can be uh, determined uh, due to lack of funding. Uh, the next project is the Island Park at Fairfield uh, Street Intersection Improvement Project, uh, which was completed back in, in April of 2021, this month. The project consists of installation of decorative poles and mast arms and traffic signals at the location. Um, it includes CCTV camera that uh, we can monitor from uh, the TMC. The installation of the new traffic signal will provide a safe movement of all modes of traffic. And the last project uh, that I will be uh, speaking about is the Floodstat project, which was a project that was fairly funded uh, via the city's uh, resiliency team. The project consists of installation of flood sensor equipment with warning signs, web-based uh, monitoring and alert system. The two locations of the placement are Hagan Avenue uh, at Fishburn Street and uh, William Ackerman uh, Drive. Uh, with that, um, I will turn it back over to Keith, or if you have any questions, uh, I'll be able to take them. Any questions hey. for Mr. Mitchell? Just just a couple couple quick things, if you don't mind, Chair, just so you all know, we're, there's a number of other aspects we'd love to be able to get ourselves involved in. I know there was a lot of reporting on Troy's side, but we wanted to give you a gist of the fact of how much work 
their small but mighty crew is doing on a regular basis in partnership with a number of different entities that wasn't even getting into all the varying different uh, TST and CTC funded projects that <clears throat> the county is doing on our behalf, but we will have to operate and maintain. We have to uh, review. Um, so whether that's Maybank and River, whether that's B, Ferry and Sanders, whether that's Maybank and Fenwick, uh, Maybank Highway and what the are doing, but we're duly involved in as partners with um, the, uh, even projects like East Bay and Market. You have Market Street drainage project that's occurring, but a part of that drainage project is a rebuilding of that uh, signalized intersection. And so there's a number of different things that we want to be involved in, we want to move forward with. Um, there's projects such as um, various flasher um, projects on Daniel Island we'd love to be able to uh, work on as well that are outside of SMA, but think we think are important projects. So our hope is that this gives you a sense of everything that we're covering, but also the fact that um, we want to maximize our staff and partnerships to be able to um, not just operate and maintain, but actually uh, get some things on the ground too. So your assistance and help in that regard um, will we'll definitely uh, be, be more than welcomed, but definitely happy to take any and all questions. All right, any questions in the committee for Mr. Mitchell or Mr. Benjamin? Council Member Del Chapo. Um, so Keith, thanks for setting up that segue for things on Daniel Island. I would like, peer view and seven farms to be looked at, at improving the safety through there. Um, and also since this year, seven farms is going to be repaved, we'll just need to coordinate with the county on the timing of that to then go in and do the road markings afterward. And finally, I just wanna thank y'all. Um, the neighbors on Island Park Drive are very, very happy that the three-way stop has gone in at Cattle and Island Park. Um, they're very, very appreciative. So thank you all for doing that so quickly. Yeah, and I, I, thank you, Council Member. And I wanna just add some color to that because I think it's important for the rest of the Council Members to hear. Um, again, Daniel Island um, signal system and otherwise is not included in the state DOT's SMA, right? They're ours. And so when we talk about improvements and doing things for the betterment for that part of our city, um, that quite frankly means us as a department coming to you all within our general fund budgetary process to get that help, right? Um, the signal, the intersection of Island Park and Fairchild was funded through leveraging dollars from the governor's park. And so figuring that out is gonna be important. Our department has gone forward and done, um, at least for seven farms near the Volvo station, we've done uh, preliminary concept engineering designs for what that could look like. Um, we've looked at the cost estimates of what seven farms in peer view are. And so those are projects that are well within our bounds as a, as a department to be able to execute and do. Um, quite frankly, we'll just need the dollars and, and, and the, and, and the uh, green light from you all as a, as a committee and council to be able to do. So there's projects like that that I think um, can definitely be of a help and, and, and move the needle on safety and access, um, but also being mindful that of what we're able to leverage within our SMA and what we're not. And one more thing I forgot to mention, um, Troy, when you were talking about this, the school, automating of the schools, does that include Berkeley County schools that are in the city of Charleston? It's like Daniel Island School, Philip Simmons Schools. Does it include those? Uh, we, if we received a request, we would go ahead and look at it and, uh, and see if we can get those upgraded. Okay. Um, but I... I don't believe we have received a request from those schools as, as of yet for any uh, school zone protection. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that would need to come from the school, like from the school district itself? Yes, they've, they've normally sent requests and we would go through and uh, have the area looked at and studied to make mm -hmm. sure where these installations need to take place okay. and move forward with design and installation. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions from any member of the committee? So, so if you don't mind, Troy, a couple of things that caught my ear in your very complete report. Thank you. Um, one is, I don't know if it's through the SMA or it goes back to TST or it goes through the safety study, but can we please keep the pressure on the DOT to look at and ultimately implement 
some left turn signals off of Calhoun north and south at St. Philip Street and at King Street. It's just mind numbing to me that in 2021, we still don't have those. And the, it's crazy. So secondly, I, I, I did catch when I sort of heard in the background, they're going to look at Lockwood and Calhoun. And I don't know how they're long they're going to look at it, but do we control the signal timing there? Because if we do, you probably need to shorten that left turn signal coming off Lockwood or lengthen it green and shorten it red coming off Lockwood onto Calhoun because it backs up off that dedicated turn lane into the travel lanes around that corner under the bridge. And it's just flat out dangerous. And not to put too much of an emphasis on it, that light is red longer than your presentation today. <laughs> it is a long red light. So, so anyway, a couple, a couple I know you've got a lot on your plate as your report is evidence, but those two to me seem super important. And I'm not just bringing them up because they're in my district. Those, those are just heavy flow areas that really need attention. Anyway, sorry. I'll go backwards. So the Lockwood and Calhoun flash, uh, flashing yellow request is for that turn. Right. As you know, it's either a red or a green. And so yep. um, that's essentially what we're trying to do is get DOT to say yes to that. And then we handle that through our SMA funds to execute. Cause that's a matter of, you know, a signal head and otherwise. So the delay, the, the delay both for that one and, and uh, farm field, cause I know council member Pell's been concerned about that one has been getting DOT's final permitting approvals. So then we can finalize uh, signal designs and go from there. Um, with regards to Calhoun street, um, the mayor did send a letter to SEDOT specifically asking for them to expedite implementation of the recommendations from the road safety audits for our four corridors um, and making sure that that was specifically the case. Um, we did get a response back from the secretary saying that they were assigning individuals to review um, those recommendations and move towards implementation. Um, as you know, council member, part of LCRT will be the upgrading of um, those signals along meeting in Calhoun, which is why we're trying to move expeditiously with the fiber cabling. The one concern that has come up for us, especially since we have precedence, but DOT is moving away from it. If you notice along Calhoun Street, they have those five head signals where there's one signal above and then uh, four underneath. DOT has been moving away from that. And what that's done is that's uh, sort of eliminated our ability to have through left or through right lanes. Um, they've been trying to get dedicated uh, turn signals, which is almost, you know, has its limitations on Calhoun Street for a right of ways perspective. We have asked um, for them to continue to use the five heads and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to navigate as it needs be. But having turn movements off of Calhoun is something that's going to have to be navigated. And um, especially when we have that um, bus rapid transit coming through in the conflict. So we've been asking LCRT team to look at it. That was I'll report on that later, but that was part of our ask to them in the 30% design aspects for them to be more clear about how turn movements and the bus will all work together. Um, so our hope is between LCRT, the road safety audits and our efforts that those pieces can be figured out. Okay, thank you. And I, I don't know, I mean, in the interim, while they're looking at Lockwood with the flashing yellow, um, can we, even if you lengthen it by two or three seconds, you'll really relieve some traffic on that green light left. So I don't know if we control that or DOT does, but I'd look at it, Troy, and just see. Because that's I, something we can. It just look. seems like an interminably long red light. I mean, brutally long. That's I'm something sorry. we can take a look at. That'd be great, Councilmember Jackson. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate your your thorough report, Troy. And you know, I was trying to count up in my head, you know, how many days in the year it would take to accomplish all of that. So I know you have a a good team we need more help, um, but we really appreciate all the all the background that goes on every day that we don't even know. Um, I, I know that it probably would be on this list um, if if the um, study had turned out differently. So, could could you just either you or Keith um, uh, speak to the the light at Folly and Camp Road where the new middle school is created? Uh, backup of traffic trying to turn left onto Folly Road and, and what the conclusion is for this point in time. There's a lot of people out here on James Island that are still, you know, not happy that they can't um, 
make the left turn. And it, it really, I see people parking in the Walgreens parking lot ready to pick up their kids because they don't want to go all the way up to the school. They have their kids walk down to Walgreens and they hop in the car at that point in time. So if you could just put that on the list in perspective to what we could not do out here. So I believe there's some adjustments that we did make after consulting with the engineer who uh, built the school um, under a county review. And she just so happens to be one of our own calls, but I'll let Troy kind of give two seconds real quick, Troy, on uh, uh, the adjustments <laughs> made there while also taking into consideration that we didn't want to deteriorate traffic on folly or put us in a position which we don't have funding for to have to look at a whole corridor um, piece with folly. Uh, yes, we uh, brought on a, a firm to uh, study the intersection during the peak hours uh, when school egress and, and exit. And uh, once we received that report back, we, we actually did the traffic study, uh, sent it to the firm, the firm looked at it, and we looked at adjustments that we could make during those two periods without uh, uh, causing uh, Folly Road great harm. Uh, we did make uh, some adjustments out there and we were monitoring them during the peak hour. So th there was time given to, I believe, the left turn movement out there. Um, but with providing that, we, we couldn't go too far because it, it, it would harm Folly Road. Um, and the next rec recommendation after that was to uh, look at retiming all of Folly Road and Maybank to get everything coordinated. Um, but in our uh, traffic study we had back in 2018, uh, we had them look at everything that was out there and they said Folly Road was a good candidate for traffic responsive. And that was written in our report. Um, I, and with, you know, with that, we, we made all adjustments that we could. So there was something done at that location. Great, Thank, thanks for that. And um, we are having a James Island Intergovernmental Council meeting on April 21st. I know Keith is aware, um, aware of that and will be there, I'm assuming. So could, could we just make that point? Because a, a lot of the residents that have their children in school or you know become tangled up in that um, are in the town and they would be on this public meeting. If you could just you know sort of let, let everybody know we've done everything we possibly can without making it into a major thing that we don't have resources to accomplish. Understood. Okay. All right. Uh, anything else for Mr. Mitchell? We're getting towards the end of our hour here, and I want to give Mr. Benjamin time to give us his director's report. Okay, Mr. Benjamin, you're on. Um, just a couple of things from me. Um, one I didn't have on my original list, but occurred. Uh, right before our afternoon that I need to acknowledge we had yet again uh, another unfortunate death on Northbridge um, and thank you to our CPD um, both for Charleston and North, North Charleston for responding and being able to handle the traffic in the area um, but we know that something needs to be done there um, the good thing about that um, has been um, the coordinated efforts between um, city of Charleston staff North Charleston staff and Charleston County staff with the designated um, engineer they have on call to look at the bridge and what uh, bike pad access looks like there. Um, and, and they've been uh, showing us various different concepts and, and thoughts about what they uh, would like to propose to their council. Um, and it looks as if they're gonna be doing some public engagement around that um, later on in the summer. And so definitely encourage the participation of those of your constituents that are concerned about that issue um, to find themselves involved in that process. Um, Got to understand, obviously, for the safety concern and the fact that those are dependent on those modes, making sure they're as safe as possible on the public right of way. But also, when you think about connectivity, if we can get bike pad access over that particular bridge, what that unlocks for our sister city, North Charleston, and some of their work they're doing with their parks, uh, the inevitability of bike pad access that's coordinated with our low country rapid transit coming into the top of our peninsula. And then also the benefits that are occurring, um, thanks to Charleston County sales tax dollars around Orange Grove, Sam Ridd, Old Town. Um, so it, it, it's a, just as Ashley River Bridge was uh, for the downtown area, um, this bridge connection becomes 
uh, a major key to unlocking connectivity um, and safety. And so uh, just wanted to make sure that you all were aware that city staff have been uh, working uh, with both North Charleston and Charleston County as Charleston County leads uh, getting uh, um, something together that can be put forward uh, for, for their councils to consider. Um, speaking of Charleston County, we did get our notification this week <clears throat> regarding sending in CTC requests. Um, as a reminder, different from TST, CTC is, is a ranked project submission um, where most municipalities get their number one request. Um, it's a small pot of funds. The vast majority of the funds goes towards paving. Um, then there's about one to 1.5 million uh, for the entire county um, to consider for other small projects. Those projects can be uh, related to road drainage, traffic calming, striping, improvements to intersections, sidewalks, bike paths, or otherwise. And so, um, you know, reminder of that, we just got some additional funding uh, for Sanders Road. Um, that was one of the projects that was uh, funded through CTC, um, um, thanks to uh, Charleston County. So um, those, those project submissions are due on May 28th. Um, so if you have um, project ideas, um, please let me know, as the mayor has asked me to put a list in front of him for him to make um, some, some decisions on. Um, speaking of traffic calming, uh, we, uh, thanks to Robbie and, and the team's work, are gonna be moving forward in this next month to two months, both on the maintenance side, because um, I know some of you have been asking about um, some of the older speed humps, and then also the new requests that you all had already previously um, approved. Um, so um, also be on the lookout. We will be coming to you all in the next couple of months with some new thoughts about how to handle the traffic calming program uh, so we can better manage it, but also have a, a, a greater level of evaluation criteria of what is and isn't getting funded. Um, quick update about um, our micromobility bike share. Um, as you know, our existing bike share um, contract uh, uh, ends in November of this year. And so we have been working internally with a small committee of city staff, along with uh, representatives from the Medical University, who's a sponsor of our existing bike share, and also Charleston Moves, to begin formulating a draft RFP that we hope to have out on the street um, this coming May. Um, just uh, last week, we had a digital design charrette um, hosted by NACTO. NACTO is National Association of City Transportation Officials, of which we are a part of. Um, they do free technical assistance and invite other cities to be able to give input on issues that you as a city might have. And so we actually had representatives from the cities of Philadelphia, Portland, and Memphis take a look at our entire bike share program, what potentially we could do around bike share and micromobility in the future, and actually give us input on that as we look at building out a particular RFP. So was very, very grateful that they would make that time um, and looking forward to getting that um, drafted and, and, and working on moving some of those pieces forward. Um, I mentioned earlier that I wanted to let you all know about LCRT. Um, it, it's been really uh, helpful to coordinate with the BCD COG team and their consultants. They allow the city uh, to uh, respond to what they believe should be included in the 30% design of scope of LCRT. And for us to be able to respond back with our considerations and desires along the route um, for connectivity and otherwise. And so we've submitted that report to them and are waiting uh, for their response back on that and look forward to coordinating with them um, and, 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 and getting them across the finish line for what they need to do for the New Starts grant this fall. And then finally, just a reminder, uh, we are in the month of April. April is our flex month for our work orders. And so there's a number of projects, Councilman Bill Chapel just mentioned one, but April allows us to uh, uh, hit on varying different projects uh, that are kind of outstanding. Councilmember Jackson will be in your district regarding that um, parking issue um, near those mailboxes as well and getting that done this month. Um, and then we'll be transitioning back to the peninsula and Johns and James Island. So um, please uh, continue to let us know about various different work order issues, um, specifically around signals, uh, signs and markings that we need to be on top of so we can make sure we're coordinating uh, with that. Our staff meet every other week, literally going over our work order list, uh, trying to make sure that we don't have uh, a, a big backlog with that. So we appreciate your input on that. Um, those were my quick couple of things. Happy to take any other questions or concerns. Any quick questions for Mr. Benjamin as we are right at the end of our hour? Councilman Sorry, Jackson. I just have, I, I just have one. Um, uh, I, I'm very sad to know about the, the, the 
the, the biker um, that was hit on the North Bridge today and um, how serious it, it is. Um, you, you talked about, you know, a lot of the advance work that you've been doing, which we're really glad to know about in terms of creating the, the connectivity over to North Charleston. But the one government entity you left out, unless I didn't hear, was SCDOT. And aren't they sort of like the big gorilla in all of this? Um, and shouldn't they be, you know, counting, counting the bodies with us and, and trying to make something um, bigger out of this, this very unsafe and, you know, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a terrible situation. And I don't think we should leave them off the list of, of um, people that need to be engaged and take ownership for making this bridge safe. No, I don't, I don't disagree at all. I think uh, what the secretary did in February with giving a department-wide directive on complete streets and that every project, no matter what, needs to take in consideration all modes of transportation, I think um, was a major statement and also gives us as municipalities leverage to call that to bear when these issues come up. Um, we saw that as evident of what some of you council members joined us on with that King Street walk um, with having SEDOT lead on their right of way of what um, you know recommendations and aspects um, need to happen. And so I think there needs to be accountability all across the board. And um, you know I am grateful for Charleston County giving the uh, uh, um, green light, so to speak, to uh, figure out a concept design that will work for that area um, and, 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 and create the type of connectivity and safety that is just so desperately needed. Um, you know, it, it, those are workers. Those are our essential workers. Those are people who are trying to get somewhere and uh, we gotta make sure that they're protected, so. Okay, any other questions, comments from the committee for Mr. Benjamin? If not, um, unless there's anything for the greater good of the city, traffic and transportation, we'll call this meeting adjourned and see you all in just a little bit at Ways and Means.